Hi everyone, welcome back to Try With Ping. Today I'm presenting a special episode. My heart saddened and sank when I heard about the shooting in a spa in Atlanta, Georgia. It's been so many years after the Chinese Exclusion Act since 1882. It's also one and the only act to exclude people on a racial basis in the U.S. I started assigning this documentary to my student in China in the Chinese course. Many kids told me that they were never taught about this, or they learned just a little bit about this piece of the history in the U.S. Nearly one third of the kids are Asians or Asian Americans in my class. Yet, we can be so ignorant and insensitive about the discrimination about our fellow Asians, Asian Americans, and Pacific Islanders. I like to include an episode that I posted in last June, twenty twenty, to address my heart on the anti-Asian hate crime. And、I urge you to stand together with all Asians and Asian Americans in the U.S. I've been in Colorado for about three and a half years now, since 2017. What hurts me the most is the microaggression and the neglect of my presence in a group discussion or in a class. Here is a post of my previous episode. <music> Welcome back to Try with Pain. This is a bonus episode where I will share my personal experience after moving to the U.S. as a new immigrant. Take a sip of chai and let's begin. It was my second year as an international student in my graduate program, and one Saturday we had a class on educational leadership and policy. I was sitting with a group of local educators having a conversation on a case study about a Korean American superintendent of a school district. She stepped into her term making some tough decisions about letting some poor performing teachers go, and we reflected how the district was adjusting to her leadership style. As educators, my classmates and I talked about some suggestions for her in the scenario of the leadership, decision making, and critical turnaround issues. One person abruptly stood up and said, "I don't agree with her leadership style. What does she know? She's just a Korean American." When listening to that comment, my face heated up and my heart quickly raced. I didn't know what to say. No one in the class said anything, nor seemed to react after these comments. So the discussion continued on. After that conversation, I felt powerless and frustrated because I could have said something. So I started this podcast to capture and share voices from diverse minority groups in my second language, English. I want to hear their voices, and I hope the world will too. And I believe I can make a difference, starting with myself. I learned not to judge too quickly and to listen to understand. You can join me by listening to the stories on my podcast. Send me an email or voice message to let me know what you think. Let's learn from each other and learn together. It was the small statements that made me feel excluded. I didn't want to stand up in the class and face this classmate. In my mind, I asked myself, "Do I really want to leave an impression that Ping is so aggressive, or Ping stood up to confront someone? So let's just be careful with her. It's the fear that hurts. I never know what to say as a citizen, but an international student in this country, when things like belittling Asians happen around me. It's also the wandering that stinks." Back in 2020, Louis and I were walking on a trail and came across a young girl. She turned around to face the side of the hill when she passed us. I thought that was just a little extreme and overcautious, but I also thought maybe she was just doing that to anyone else on the trail. However, when I turned around and saw her passing another white couple, she didn't do that to them. I knew that she turned around because of her race, or do I always know? It's the unknown names of the victims in Georgia upset my stomach. In my past experience as an interpreter, I had a couple of times to work with the police and TV reporters. We went into the massage parlors or the spas to find evidence of sexual services. 
all the women I saw were Chinese. Why weren't those Korean women identified right after their death in Georgia? The South Korean consulate said that they weren't able to reach the next of kin, so it took a few more days than usual. In my opinion, they could be the victims of human trafficking. They could be trafficked from a parlor to another. They might not even have a legal status to be here in the U.S. I wasn't even sure if the names that they are using are their real names. Many might ask, why did these immigrants come and do this kind of job? I would ask, if they really had great lives back in their hometown, why would they come here and try to find a better future? Was it anyone's choice to sell their body like this? In my observation, Asians usually tend to be more silent in the whole American society. It could be the culture, the language, or the teaching about keeping one's head down and avoid conflicts. However, it is not fine to bully the weak. It is not fine to let the hate crime slide. It is not fine to not speak up when we have limited language skills. Today, I want to stand with all Asian communities, and I encourage you to reach out and support them as well. My fellow Asians in the U.S., my heart and prayers go out to you. At this moment, I don't really know what I can do but praying for them. I hope to make this mini episode to convey what I want to say in response to the racial injustice in this current situation in the U.S. Stop the hate crime.